Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us. I am Brett Norton, your host today. Also joining us throughout the day is going to be my counterpart or my co colleague, Bobby Parker. So look forward to having him on as well. I uh, wanted to welcome back those of you joining us for another Beyond Clean virtual conference and also extend a very warm welcome to all of you joining us for the very first time. It's gonna be an action-packed day with lots of great discussions. So I'm glad you guys are all joining us for yet another virtual conference. Uh, the conference title today is Be Prepared or Be Repaired if you wanna look at the title that way, No Instrument Left Behind. I want to thank our event spa sponsor, Asculat, for help helping to make this day of education possible. And also want to thank our friends over at First Case for collaborating for, uh, for the nursing credits for today. So thank you, Melanie Perry over at First Case. I want to also make sure to let you know that the CE credits will be available after the conference. And once the conference is concluded, you will automatically be directed to the 6CE conference survey following, today, following the event today. Um, we also have some resources on the right side of the window, which also kind of dire also directs you for the CE, present CE uh, accred credits themselves. So there is a brochure there that has all the direction on how to acquire your CE. We also have some great uh, resources from Asculap, our sponsor, so make sure to check those out. Um, also, some housekeeping. Since we are dealing with technology, things do happen at times. If you have issues with a screen, if things are falling behind or delayed, if there is an audio issue, please go ahead and refresh your screen. That fix it about 99.9% .9 of the time. So uh, let's uh, get rolling here shortly. I want to encourage some questions from everybody because the more questions we get, the more interaction we have from our speakers. So feel free to drop some questions into the Q&A box. I want you to sit back and relax, assemble that tray, and it's time to get started. Our first speaker is Pavel Strigel. He is the service manager at Asculap and a very skilled medical device sales, sales operations, marketing, and in and, and leadership as well. Pavel is known in the industry as a leading expert in medical device manufacturing. His presentation, presentation title is titled, No Instruments Left Behind. What good is an orthopedic tray without its mullet or an open heart tray without its retractor? In fact, every surgery requires a list of critical must-have instruments that are needed to safely provide the best surgical care to our patients. Join Pavel as he makes the case for the proper care and handling of medical devices to ensure no instruments are left behind when it comes to the quality and completion of our surgical trays. Without further ado, let's welcome Pavel. Good morning, everyone. I am very excited to be here today, and I look forward to, uh, to do this presentation. Uh, Brett, thank you for, uh, for, for the introduction. Uh, a little bit more about my background, just really quick. Um, I have 28 years in the medical field and working in manufacturing and service uh, for medical devices. And again, I'm super excited to be here. I have this presentation that I wanna share with you. And we are going to be talking about the importance of how to properly care for surgical instruments, for medical devices. Uh, we're gonna, we are going to talk, be talking about the quality and many other things that I think you should be able to find important and hopefully helpful and useful. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get this presentation started. So again, the title here is No Instruments Left Behind. And uh, I also wanted to title it World of Medical Devices. 
So as we go to the agenda, once again, I want to focus on a few key points that I think are very important that I wanted to highlight when we talk about the world of medical devices. Manufacturing is the first stop. We're going to spend a couple of minutes talking about that. Uh, importance of quality. I want to make sure that we do not miss that very important element. Obviously, quality is very important, so I want to focus on that as well. I also want to talk about why proper care and maintenance is important. I know that it is, and I'm sure you do too. And I want to stress that a little bit and go over some examples there uh, to better illustrate the importance of it. I also would like to talk about the good repairs versus bad repairs and do some comparisons. I have some great pictures that I want to show you and, uh, and a few examples that I want to highlight so we can take a closer look at, at that, as this is also something that's very important. And finally, I wanted to end this presentation with uh, some tips and pointers uh, for, uh, for you, for all of you, for sterile, sterile processing folks, and everybody who takes part in handling medical devices on a daily basis. So with that, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and, and move over to the first slide. So world of manufacture, who knows instruments better than the OEM? I wanted to bring this up because for me personally, I started my career uh, and did my, years ago now, did my apprentice program to, be, to become a master craftsman in manufacturing and service of medical devices. I did have a chance firsthand to experience uh, the insights um, of, the, of the manufacturing process. And there's a lot of very important elements that go into how the instrumentation is made. And it all originates from the OEM. So, of course, you know, just to use a couple examples here, we're gonna have the research and development. That's, that's how everything begins. We want to make sure that that we, you know, the the the, the OEM, the the manufacturer, focuses on developing and identifying the best possible products to pro provide sol solutions uh, through those products. So, of course, the prototypes, doing the prototypes, tests, and the validations are also very important. Quality and regulatory, and then of course we move over to uh, production quality inspection, proper OEM training. OEM parts are also very important, and I want to stress that. And of course, behind all of that, we have years of experience and expertise that supports, supports this. So once again, I want to highlight the importance of it because everything originates that. And I do believe that Nobody really knows, in this case, the, the, the instrument, the medical devices, better than, than the OEM because, because of all these elements that come into play within the process of manufacturing. So I, I want to stress it because, again, I, I think this, this, is, this is very critical. I have seen it. There's a whole lot more that goes into that that most people may realize, and until you go and see it for yourself or you experience it, uh, you may not fully understand it, but that's the reason why I wanted to include this. So we're now going to move to our next slide. And I get personally very excited about talking about quality. Quality, we hear this word, word all the time when somebody mentions quality, but it really has in-depth meaning. And I was trying to be um, creative a little bit with my presentation and put together some important, important bullet points that highlight what happens when we have a quality product. So, for example, quality materials 
equal quality products. And I think all of us know that. And it doesn't even have to be, I'm gonna step out for a second and use just a real life scenario. It could be anything that we use in life, whether it's at home or in the office. Uh, and we, we then understand that there's a importance of that quality that comes with, with the product. So the, the better the quality, the, the better the outcome. So quality products then equals quality performance. Quality performance equals quality results. Quality results will equal customer and end user satisfaction. And finally, end user satisfaction equals quality of patient's care. That is how I wanted to put this together to illustrate the importance of it. And I also want to stress that you should expect nothing less than quality product and settle for the best, never settle for less, because that's that's very important and that's gonna affect the, the way you will operate, the surgeons will operate, and again, and, and again, it weighs in heavy on the final outcome of patient's surgery in the overall satisfaction. So to use a few more examples, when we are talking about quality, I brought some examples here into this presentation. As you, as you can see, we're talking about medical devices, in this case, surgical instruments, like the Alice clamp, for example. And uh, just wanted to highlight a few things. And again, I, I have seen a lot of those things over the years um, from the manufacturing and throughout my career working in the service division. And, and sometimes those things can be concerning, if not careful, if the proper quality is not being applied to that manufacturing process and or service, it could really affect the function of the device. Frankly, a lot of times you could argue that the same, that, instrument, that instrument may no longer be the same instrument that you first time got your hands on after some of the alteration that may take place or modification or wear and tear. So in here on my left, as you can see, I have it circled in red. You can see there's a difference in the overall length and size of the working end of, of, this, of this instrument. And off to the right, to, to better illustrate that, that's, that's a quality product. Everything matches very nicely. The overall shape of the working is the same, length, width. This is the kind of product you want to be working with because this will deliver quality outcome. And then to give a little bit more insight to that, at the bottom, in, the, in, the, in the, those two pictures, again, to the left, we're seeing how those instruments, if not done correctly, or if you know they might have been neglected and not properly cared for, you may have, again, different out outcome. And uh, frankly, the, the instrument will be, will be compromised. So you can see, obviously, that in here, the, uh, on my left, bottom picture circle in red you can see how the jaws are not lined up somebody might have grind a little bit too much off of the tip of that uh, clamp and uh, off to the right of course you can see how everything is nicely finished and looks the same so there's a big difference there um, next picture also presents and kind of brings up the uh, the quality aspect we can see the, in this case, distal tip uh, with, in this case, with a lot of those clamps, like the Kelly clamps, for example, um, we want the tip to close first. Um, a lot of times people may not be paying attention to those details, uh, but it is very important. Again, those are the important elements of those instruments. Uh, in, in, in my case, I know this from, from the manufacturing because you, you want, if this was, 
I'm going to use an example, a cardiovascular plan, for example, um, you want that instrument, that working end, to be set properly with oftentimes, depending on the type of device, um, there has to be a certain pressure that's applied as the, uh, as the working end closes onto, let's say, a tissue or a, or a vein. So again, it, it is very important to, uh, to know these things. Another example here, we have the uh, bone cutting instruments, the rongeurs. And um, I wanted to highlight a few things here as well with some of the most common issues that we're seeing that we should be paying attention to. Again, all of that has to do with ensuring that the uh, instrument is functioning properly. That there's no issues and the surgeon can safely use the device. So on the upper left, we can see how everything nicely lines, lines up. The spring is nicely engaged. On, um, off to the right, in the same picture, circle, circled in red, we can see that the spring is disengaged. It could also be broken. And obviously, that is going to compromise the function of this device. In fact, it may not even be uh, useful. Uh, it may not even function properly when it's compromised like that. Then off to the bottom right, we can see uh, the osteotomes. Obviously, we can see how there's a heavy discoloration, let alone, let alone talking about the uh, actual working end and how that's compromised. And uh, there may be some uh, bits and pieces that are missing off of that working end. So those are all the examples of how the quality Many, uh, of the manufacturing of the device and then um, the same then applies to service of medical devices how this can make a make a difference in the way the devices perform and how they can be used so this this last slide that I have in on quality I wanted to include this story it has this uh, Murphy retractor a little bit of a personal story. Uh, one time we were servicing uh, this one customer on the, on, the, on the East Coast where we were uh, scanning through the uh, sets of instruments and we pulled this, this instrument out of the set. And as we looked at this instrument, we have realized that this instrument is dated back to early uh, 1900s. And yet the instrument is fully functional. It almost looked like brand new device and it was used in those sets in fact there are few of them that we have found within those sets the reason why i'm bringing this up is once again to illustrate the importance of how quality matters uh, quality product that's carried on to through, through the many through the manufacturing process and the same thing goes for repair uh, so absolutely the instruments can last and they can perform at their best just like if they were new if somebody takes care of them and if they come from from good selling manufacturing and uh and again those can be definitely used for for years to come so on the quality piece, that's, that's, those are the important points that I wanted to bring up and, and, and share with you. So the next step for us is proper care and maintenance. We all know that proper care and maintenance is important. Surgical instruments represent a large portion of hospital's assets. So you should protect your investment. Proper and timely maintenance guarantees that each instrument will be maintained to extend its useful life. Proactive approach to instrument maintenance and repairs helps eliminate stress on the clinical staff. I think that all of you probably already know that. I am here just to continue to highlight, highlight that this, is, this element is also very important. That we need to, we should be taking care of the uh, medical devices that we're working with. Because 
through that, we can extend the life of, of, um, of these devices. Their life expectancy will be, will be different when those instruments are being cared for properly. And, and there's a whole lot more that goes into that. We can talk about uh, how this is also a hidden cost saving. Um, in as much as a lot of people may not realize that. If you do care properly for your instrumentation, there's no reason why those instruments shouldn't last for, for years to come. What else could come from that as a, as a benefit? How about uh, increasing certain satisfaction by providing quality product to the OR? I'm sure that throughout your careers, and your experiences, you have seen it, you must have seen it firsthand. The surgeons too want to make sure that they are using quality products. They're using a device that they want to use right then and there during surgery that will perform exactly as, as they want this device to perform without, without a compromise. So take no shortcuts and provide patients with best pro proper care because it is, it is very important. Oftentimes, when I think of uh, proper care and maintenance, and again, I'm gonna step out of the world of medical devices for a second just to use a different example. I think that, because I think that, you know, in as much as I don't want to underestimate the importance of medical devices, if we translate that over to just our everyday lives and we think about, I don't know, maybe taking care of our car, for example, making sure that the oil is changed on time, um, brakes get changed on time and things like that, we, we do that for a purpose because we rely on this car to take us where we want to go. And if we neglect these things, we are compromising quality of, of uh, in this case, our car, but, and also potentially exposing ourselves to a risk that this car may break on the way to work. Uh, and, and there's no different in the world of surgical instruments. Too often, I have seen instrumentation coming in for service, looking, be in a poor condition. What I know that if someone had, take, had taken the time to probably properly care for, for those instruments, those instruments could last a whole lot longer. And it, and it doesn't take much to do it. Um, it all has to do with understanding of how instruments function, how they should be cared for, how to properly lubricate instruments. Uh, and once we have the understanding of it, we can help everybody, help with this entire process across the board, where everybody will be satisfied. We can, we can con uh, contribute to cost savings um, for, the, for the hospital systems and again, ultimately increase surgeon satisfaction. So when we're talking about proper care and maintenance, I have prepared this slide here where have, I have a few examples here for how the, the instrument set should be, should be cared for as far as doing the tray inspections um, and the repairs, if needed, are concerned. So again, we don't. This doesn't have to be the specific method as far as the duration and, and uh, intervals are concerned. But those are just the overall, like standard recommendations. Of course, there will be different var variables depending on how often certain instruments or certain trays are used. As, as we know it, different hospitals, one hospital may be heavy on doing 
uh, one type of surgery, for example, this may be heavy on the, on the laparoscopic type procedures versus more of a general procedures. And of course, that will then play a factor in how frequently should those instruments be looked at. But again, this is just the overall uh, industry, industry standard that kind of helps guide that a little bit. So for major trays, the recommendations will be to, uh, to have those trays looked at at least once every, every four months. Lab, lab trays, of, of course, may, may, may be different. And, uh, and uh, the same for uh, in here, uh, we have the osteotems, curettes, and, and uh, gouges, elevators, and ortho. Uh, and in here, we, we highlighted that those should be taken care of as needed or looked at as needed. So with, with that said, again, the best recommendation I have is that you as the uh, healthcare professional in the, in, the, in the OR, you have the, the power to, to, to help with that. You have oftentimes the years of experience and you can, you can help set those parameters knowing what those intervals should be and I ask you that you don't neglect that, that you use that experience that you have to, to probably care for those instruments because, because that's, that's, that's very important. Then there's some more examples that I wanted to bring in to this presentation, again, on the topic of proper care and maintenance, the recommended guidelines for processing cycles. So very similar to what we had discussed for different types of uh, in, uh, instrument sets or specialties, like the neuro, ortho, ENT. A um, couple more things I wanna highlight, and I think, again, I know that you being the expert, you understand this language, you understand the importance of it. Again, pay attention to what you're seeing on, 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 a, on a regular basis. Uh, pay attention to, the, to, to the, how the instruments function, uh, check instruments, and if you see something that doesn't look right, then obviously those instruments should be should be cared for, and they should be sent off to be either serviced or or replaced. So again, I, I encourage you to uh, take all these things into consider into consideration. When it comes to that's our uh, our next stop here. What what? When it comes to repair and service, and I call it the good repair versus versus bad repair, and that's where I need to be a little bit careful because I can be very passionate about repairs as well. I've, I have spent a lot of years working in, in the service department, and uh, so I definitely have seen a lot of instruments coming in. In here, the quality piece that we have discussed also comes into play. So, except with this specific example, we are talking about quality of repairs. And once again, I'm sure that you have seen numerous of different examples of maybe the good, and hopefully the good repairs, the quality repairs, and maybe the not so good um, repairs. When you might have asked a question or you question the, the function of the device or maybe even question was this device even repaired? So I encourage you to, uh, to pay attention to those things. Not all services are equal. And as much as I, you know, don't want to say it in that, in that format, there will be some service groups that will just do a better job at, at uh, taking care of your instrumentation. They do have better and more in-depth knowledge to properly care for your assets versus others who may not. But yet the industry, that, the industry doesn't, to our surprise, to my surprise often, does not have a lot of regulations that would really control that, that piece. 
friend of mine oftentimes uses the example, and I know this is a little bit extreme, but you may have somebody who is driving an ice cream truck tomorrow convert this into a into a shop on the wheels, pulling up to the hospital and offering services to uh, to the to the hospitals. Hopefully that's not the case, but you have to be careful. You definitely have to be careful. So just to illustrate the point I'm trying to make here, I have some pictures that I wanted to bring in. And again, I think it all nicely come together here in, in the way, excuse me. I'm sorry. In the way we had talked about all of this in one big package, anything from that OEM standards, how instruments are manufactured, what stainless steel is used uh, with uh, in manufacturing of uh, medical devices. And then also now, again, with, with examples that I'm showing to you here now, off to the left, you can see the tips of scissors and how those two appear to, well, they, they look like two different instruments. I couldn't tell you how many times I've seen scissors coming in. The article number is the same, but they do look like completely, like two completely different instruments. So you, you have to be careful because all those things do matter. Instrument that will be compromised like that will no longer function properly. It's no longer the same instrument. They, there may be some tolerances and some standards put into place as to how much material can be removed during repair, but there, there should definitely be some boundaries and some limits when it comes to that. In, the, in this case, and this may be a little bit extreme, we, we have used the example of, you know, how one scissor may be 50% short of the original specifications. No one should ever do that. Again, and that this scissor, this scissor would no longer be the same scissor. And trust me, it will definitely function different, and the quality of the device will just be altered. Off to the right, really quick, we have the uh, another example where you may see screws that are riveted or welded into place. That's that's another bad practice. You do not want to do that again. Me coming from the manufacturing, I personally had worked on, on manufacturing of medical devices and I do have a lot of, a lot of experience that comes from, from this background. And that is now how this should be done. Uh, this, this, and I don't wanna go into too much detail from the technical side of things, but there's no reason for this screw to be welded in place and no riveted in place. Some may practice that if somebody doesn't have the knowledge and the proper expertise to repair those instruments, they may try different things. Oftentimes without knowing that they may ultimately be causing more harm than good to those instruments. Neither holders. We see a lot of those types of instruments in general instrument sets, of course. How many times have we seen the TC tungsten carbide inserts that are compromised that have been that that wear over time that maybe the chip the tips have chipped off or maybe the TC insert cracked we see it all the time that's another important element that we need to pay attention to because all of those things matter and coming back to how we talked about quality of a repair and what's too much when it comes to removing too much material of, of the instrument. I don't know if you can see my mouse and what I'm pointing at, but if you take a look at the right hand side, a picture at the bottom, you can see how this, uh, this one jaw, this instrument needle holder has, has been compromised, has been sharpened beyond beyond um, it's 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 it should not beyond its use it should not be 
a compromise like that. Um, I have seen, again, we have seen in service so many uh, different misrepairs where, and especially with devices like the two, where some services, service department may try to remove those inserts. This is not a good practice. We have another, let me see if I can, uh, I'm sorry if I, I jumped the slide. So we did talk about this. Now, when we look at that, we see in this case, we're talking about uh, sterile containers. So let's talk about this because I always also get very passionate about that. I know that sterile containers play extremely important role in the world of medical devices. Some could argue that instruments themselves without proper sterilizations or proper sterilization are not good. And that is absolutely true. Um, I've heard people using terms uh, describing sterile containers as just metal box that holds instruments. I think this is understatement. I think this is undermining the um, what those devices need to go through and how important of a role they play in ensuring proper sterilization within those sets that are placed inside 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 the sterile containers. So once again, and yes, those instruments, well, in this case, containers, oftentimes take a beating. I do observe a lot of damage uh, from just being moved around and other containers sitting on top of a container and so forth, heavy discoloration. But we got to remember that the containers take the beating so the instruments don't have to. So once again, very critical, pay attention to your uh, fleet of your container and make sure that that's in a working condition. Too often we see containers come through and they're just, they're not in a good condition. They're, and I know you have seen it firsthand over and over again. And once more, there's a way to probably properly care for those containers. That's where things like uh, IFU, uh, instruction for use comes into play. And there's a ton of other materials and tips that you can use to, again, to ensure that your, that, that your fleet of your containers, container system is properly cared for. Again, I cannot stress enough how important the containers are. So, So I have uh, another slide or another chapter here for us to discuss. And this is our last uh, chapter uh, with some pointers and tips for how to properly care for your instrumentation. So once again, I wanted to include that at the very end to give it a nice summary. In the recap, we had talked about the OEM uh, part at the beginning and the importance of it all. Why is it important? And we carried that through uh, the uh, quality, which obviously it goes without say how important that element is. But then proper care and maintenance, of course, and the repair portion, what to look for, the good repairs versus the bad repairs. And now finally, the world of stir processing, right? That's where everything comes, that's where everything happens. I mean, that's where, that's, that's where you could argue the magic happens. Um, and I'll, Sometimes I feel like sterile processing, to me, sterile processing it plays a critical role in, in the way in the way hospital system systems function from the standpoint of how the instrumentation is um, uh, cared for. It's it's extremely important. So make your life a little easier by by understanding the fit and function of, of the instruments, learning proper inspection methods, knowing how to properly test medical devices, utilize service team expertise, take part 
in addition in educational programs communicate with nurses and surgeons and learn how to best optimize your sets so all of that is super important and i know that you're familiar with all these bullet points that i'm highlighting here in this in this presentation uh, most importantly i'm going to read the, that uh, one comment that i have inputted into this into this uh, presentation most importantly make sure that the instrument that are going up to the or have been properly sterilized and are safe to use we all know that this is critical we want through this process of caring for instruments making sure the instruments are fully functional and will deliver the best performance possible carrying that through the uh, surgeon satisfaction and then finally the patient outcome right we want to make sure that when those instruments make it to uh to the or and are used in the surgeries the, making sure that there's no issues there make sure that they're making sure that they're, they're fully functional and uh and at the end the final outcome of it is what matters the most oftentimes we talk about and again i'm going to step out of the uh the world of medical devices space just for a quick second and and kind of convey a little bit over to our day-to-day -day lives and talking about our loved ones for example um even throughout my throughout my careers and that those folks that i that i have talked to over the years we often bring bring up those examples how what if my mom was on this hospital bed what if the device that somehow was compromised was used in this set and now all of a sudden it wasn't functioning it wasn't doing what it's supposed to do of course this carries over to uh disappointment from the from the surgeon standpoint that you know the device is not functioning causing potential delays and could potentially even result in uh in unwanted harm to the patient so obviously this is super super important the, the good news is i apologize for that again the good news is that with the knowledge that we can obtain with the expertise that we can share among all the staff, we can help eliminate that risk. So a couple more slides that I wanted to use here to further illustrate. And again, I'm smiling a little bit because I know for those of you who have worked and do work in sterile processing department, you care for surgical instrumentation, medical devices, you, you see that. But continue to pay attention to these things and address it, address it properly to, to make a change. So if we look at the, some of the examples that I have prepared here, we have the rongeur on the, on the very top, very common, right? We're gonna have some wear and tear to the working end. The cutting edge may not be as nice and smooth as it should be. Therefore, the function of this device could be, uh, could be compromised. This could also potentially come from a, come it could come from misuse also we again not to pick on on the surgeon but we have seen we have seen so many different examples over the years where the instrument is used for something that it is not intended to be used for and that and this could also be an issue of course uh then on the right top on the right hand corner on the very top we can see the you know uh normal wear and tear again from in this case we have a carison so I'm from chipping away at the bone uh, taking out the fragments of the bone those instruments are delicate and can wear over time there's a possibility that that cutting gauge may be folded a little bit and may get dull over time in which case you know the instruments will require service um, then a few more examples here of course missing materials in the in a, in a working and again it could come from 
that, that could be a different leading cause uh, to that. Anything again from uh, from a potential misuse to instrument maybe dropped or uh, the, maybe the screw could get loose and therefore the, there's a misalignment at the working end. We also have some examples here again with the carison tips. Pay attention to those. I know you do with the very delicate ones, especially because they need to be properly cared for. And um, if you're not careful, you may be leaving some instruments behind where those instruments could be compromised. So make, make sure that you're doing your due diligence to check them properly. Um, pay attention to burrs and screws, screws coming loose, and um, in all those different areas, because that, that's very important. Uh, we have few few more examples here with the uh, with the curette, for example, and uh, and how there can be there could be a damage down to the working end, of course. In which case, it goes without say that the function could be compromised. There are also different methods for how to inspect all of these instruments. So, again, I I encourage you to uh, to utilize all the resources that are available uh, from the uh, OEM from uh, your providers for your services to best understand what to look for and how to properly check your instruments for uh, for proper function. Um, in this slide, and I don't know how well you can see this, but again, I wanted to bring up a few examples of some of the resources that are available that you can use and you can use that to educate your staff to through training to again to know how to properly care for your for your assets um, in this example and again this could look different it may look different i just happen to use that just to illustrate a few things uh, but um, some of the document documents that we actually use here in our service department for some of the key elements and areas that are important that we must pay attention to for, for when we go through the checkpoints. Um, in this case, we're talking about scissor, using this as an example, looking at the tips, of course. This actually may happen to be, uh, I believe this one is uh, uh, TC, uh, considering that it has a gold on the, on the rings uh, at the at TC, a tungsten carbide scissor. We know that those are prone to have, you know, TC carbide, tungsten carbide insert chip off or wear a little bit. So we want to make sure that we are doing our due diligence when checking for the for the proper function and so forth. So once again, you can you can use and I encourage you to reach out, ask questions. There's a lot of information that's out there. Uh, there's a lot of books. Um, uh, IFU is always a great to go place and resource to find out more about your, your, you know, surgical device or your device, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, surgical device to, to check for the for the spec on how to properly care for these instruments. And another example, very similar to the one I showed you just, just a minute ago on how to, you know, check for the, uh, for the function, how the instrument could fu uh, should function, rather, I'm sorry, uh, even in the way the, the ratchets come together and how they should engage with when the tip is closing and how do i know that that's that is how the instrument should function utilize all of these resources i'm sure you have a lot of experience among your staff um, that comes from years of experience ask questions reach out to your vendor you have all the right to ask your vendors to help you support you through training through uh to some of the materials that may that may make uh, available to you so you can better educate yourself. And with that, you can carry out a better quality products throughout the entire process. So with that being said, we're coming up on uh, 15 minutes. I wanna make sure that we have an opportunity to maybe uh, talk a little bit too. So I'm gonna end on this note. I wanna thank you for uh, for joining us today and listening to uh, to our presentation, hope you found this useful. 
as you can tell, I'm super passionate about it. Been 20 years and uh, in the medical device industry, that's in my blood. I am super passionate about it and uh, always love to talk about this. So thank you very much. And uh, I'm going to end on this note. All right, Pavel, if you want to stay back in with us, um, we got a few questions we probably should get answered with our audience. Um, Pavel, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right. Um, great presentation. And we've got some really good comments in the comments section on that. So really, thank you. I, you know, with a lot of the examples, the visual examples that you showed, it was, you know, something that in my experience, I'm, you know, I've not had a whole lot of experience on the repair side of things, but I have seen some pretty, pretty uh, questionable instruments on visit, visits to the departments. And, um, you know, when you mentioned family members on the other end of this, it really resonated with me because my dad had a series of surgeries over a year ago that were very uh, dependent on the quality of the instruments. The surgeon was very, very uh, adamant about having the best instru instruments on the table because of how timely and critical the surgery was. So thanks for bringing that up. And then also the uh, care and maintenance program with the uh, car maintenance example. That was great because I actually did a car maintenance pro, uh, uh, presentation in college, so <laughs> that was a good one. Um, why don't we get to some questions here? Uh, had a lot Absolutely. of really good ones. Um, so I'll start with Brian. And he says, I must share the importance of paying attention to quality of our instruments during the decontamination process is paramount i came across a cob elevator which i would never have known the handle was hollow upon placing my instruments in my sink shortly afterwards i noticed a steady stream of bubbles coming from the handle of the cob elevator it was an exciting find and scare and a scary find <laughs> to think that this was a pinhole on the handle allowing for fluid invasion imagine the gross contaminants contained within would you success would you suggest this to be a manufacturer's defect. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to answer that question the best that I can. Uh, first of all, great example. It's not that uncommon, actually. We have seen a lot of instruments over the years uh, with this problem. Could this be related to the OEM? I I'm not going to say that there's no possible way that, you know, that the whole could be left in the, in the in the handle, it should it should never happen. And I know the ma many many manufacturers ensure through uh, quality inspections that everything is checked to spec. I, I, my best guess is that that probably happened just like over time. There somewhere that the, the instrument was. And I don't know how old this instrument was, but it was put through use however many times, uh, mixed within the sets. And and again, if I had a chance to maybe see the instrument, the condition overall. Uh, maybe that would help me paint a better picture. But, um, you know, what I do know that over time, just like everything else, including instruments, that in instrumentation is going to work through the cycle of, you know, repetitive washes and sterilizations and use. And maybe that instrument had left and went uh, for a repair somewhere, perhaps more than once over the course of how many years, depending on how old the device is. Again, it's a little bit hard to tell. There could be different variables to that, but it could be compromised throughout all these stages somewhere. So, uh, but a great, I would just say this in a, in a summary to comment this great catch, definitely no go, definitely take this instrument out of the out of the set, uh, sent to be to be service, uh, because yes, you don't want to have a problem like that uh, contaminating um, your instruments within the set. Definitely a big issue. Great catch, and uh, I'm happy to hear that you're paying attention to the, to those details. Yeah, great. Yeah, great question, Brian, and uh, good catch, as Pavel said. Uh, next question uh, comes from Hinock. Uh, 
uh, a repair company removed the passivation layer on all the instruments sent to be refurbished. What does refurbishing really mean? Not using sand on instruments, but making sure they work properly? Or what does that actually mean? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna smile again, because again, I'm super pa passionate about this stuff and I love talking about it. So, hmm. okay, so when it comes to refurbishing of, of medical devices, there, there are different methods that can be used. The ideal state would be to um, bring the instrumentation to a like new condition. Right, so kind of reaching the back to how the instruments have been made to begin with, including the, the refurbishing. In this case, if it went to repair, the refurbishing portion versus how was it finished from from the OEM standards. Um, I do know that a lot of uh, repairs, repair centers, repairs group will uh, refurbish instrument with the uh, with the use of. Uh, of the bead blasting, sand media or glass beads to to um, to um, refinish that surface. And, and I think there was a question also about this uh, passivation. I, I will tell you this because this comes up very often. Yes, at least from my perspective, from where I come from and what I have seen with our products, yes, in the new instrumentation, we're gonna use the stainless steel as an example will have the passi uh, passivation layer put on the instruments as kind of the final step, absolutely. Now, over time, again, being a realist here, that passivation layer through, again, repetitive uh, use, uh, repetitive cycles of washing and sterilization, and, and with the instruments getting all mixed up and rubbing off on each other, that, that all of that is gonna result in that wear and tear, and that, that passive layer of the passivation will wear. The good news is, um, and I don't know how many people know that. I don't want to be too go too much into science, but um, but the surface of the instrument, in most cases, depending on what it is, and again, I'm going to just stick to a stainless steel, has the tendency to repassivate itself. And I, I and again, I don't want to confuse anyone. This is probably a separate topic for a long discussion. I was going to say uh, we but, could have um, a whole other discussion on that. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be scared in a summary really quick, because I know we have other things you want to get to. I, I wouldn't be scared of, you know, if I send instrumentation to be serviced, of course, pay attention. I I hope that no one on the other side is taking those your instruments and heavy grinding them on, on like a grinding belt or something uh, to remove that, that surface layer like deep and heavy, because you, you would not want that because you're likely then to, to compromise that, that that surface, compromise that you may be overheating it and at the same time changing the structure of, overall of, of this of this of this instrument. So pay attention to that. But you know, naturally so throughout the course of throughout the process of refurbishment, again, um, the uh, use of the of the uh, sandblasting machines to refurbish it, uh, polishing, buffing, all that is pretty common. And in general, I'll just end on that note, it should not do harm to your instruments. If if it's properly done, Pay attention to the quality of it when it comes back, the way it looks. Make sure there's no discolorations. Um, and then there's no like the rainbow color looking thing when somebody again might have put something to a grinder and was way too heavy. Um, pay attention to all of those things after the first wash, uh, when it goes through a decontam. Uh, and I hope, well, in most cases you should definitely be safe and it's safe with the with the choice of your of your vendor who does your work. But be be, be uh, vigilant about it and pay attention to the, some of the details that I have highlighted. Yeah, I guess you, you'd want to say that although the manufacturers are there to help you with the instruments and make sure that the instruments are in good standing, you also want to be Q, uh, quality checking the manufacturer when, this, when the instruments come back to make sure that they're in good shape. Um, I've got a good question here from Bobby. Are instruments being made and finished differently today than they used to be? And do you expect in 21, 22, we're going to find a Murphy retractor still being around from 2022? <laughs> I love this. I love this dialogue. Um, okay, how do I approach that? I, I, I would imagine I'm no longer in manufacturing, of course, right? But I, I used to work in the manufacturing uh, facility. Uh, I worked on instruments, on, manuf on, on making the instruments and so forth. Have things changed over the years? I'm sure. I'm sure they have. 
I would hope that the basic standards and principles of how instruments should be made so they can last a very long time. Um, they come uh, uh, from the quality of, of materials that the instruments are built from and made from. I hope that, that, that you know, that manufacturers still do that. Um, can I be more specific? Uh, no, I cannot. Again, I have not worked in manufacturing for, for a long time. Uh, the Murphy retractor, absolutely. I mean, again, puts a smile on my face. This is a great example, and I wish that all of all of the instruments were made of that quality of of, of materials and, and and products. Um, again, and, and the, the best I can <laughs> they can suggest here: pay attention. You are the expert. I know you are. All of you are working in SPD. You have seen it all. Pay attention. Uh, that's that's really I think. Pay attention to those details. Look at those instruments. Um, uh, obtain the resources that may be helpful to you, books for how to check stuff, how to inspect, talk to your uh, providers, ask questions, do educational courses. And once you do that, I, I think you'll be okay. That, that, that will definitely be helpful and it will make your life that much easier. You will have a better quality product. Great. Well, I think uh, we've got time to squeeze in one more and we've got so many good comments. I want to make sure we try and get to as many as we can, but uh, let's throw in a comment from Embry. If you have one kind of tray with one kind of instrument with no backup and the procedure is tomorrow based on your experience, what would you consider the best course of action? So I wanna make sure I understood that. So we have one, one, one specific set with, yep. one, yeah. one, with one specific instru instrument and the, this is set for a surgery, let's say the next day. Right, and no backup. And, and no backup. And... <laughs> <laughs> so it's well, more or less a... having, having the quality yeah. of the instrument. And... Yeah, really, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I wanna make sure that I understood the question. Uh, are, we, are we talking about, is the, should I even put the set out to be used just in case something does go wrong? I need a replacement. I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I understand the question. Am I, am I on the right track here, Brad? With, with this? I think so. Uh, Embry, if you're still on, if you want to go ahead and throw out any more details on it. But, you know, I think it's it's uh, alluding to the to just the shortage if there if okay. you just don't have uh, the resources and, okay. you, you know, there's no choices. You okay. got, I think it really all comes down to quality. Right. Uh, absolutely. And I would just say this really quick and maybe we can get another one if we have enough time. But I would just say this and I said this out loud and I encourage you to do that. Uh, under no circumstances should anyone put a an instrument set into a use for surgery if you're not sure that, that that instrumentation is ready to be used. If it is in any way compromised, it should not be used. I would agree, and I think that that's probably what he's getting at. We want to make sure we emphasize that to all of our viewers out there to, you know, if it's not good enough to use on a family member or anybody, that's, that's, yeah, you know, that's exactly it. Don't put it out there. Um, let's squeeze in one last one while we got a, got, got this rolling. Uh, what methods have you used to facilitate cooperation between vendors, surgeons, and SPS in regard to loaner instrumentation that is in poor repair? No, the instrumentation that's important. The the best answer here here I will have is this, that, and that's how I how I operate here too. Talk to your, you have all the right in the world to expect quality service from your vendors and from your providers. Um, your hospital system is paying money to have those services performed, and whether it's you whether you buy new instrumentation or utilize any other services to then, you know, help you with your uh, with your instruments, assets, and, and caring for the instruments and all this stuff. So I would say that you, uh, I think I encourage you to push back, to ask those questions. Those providers, in, if they're true professionals, they should absolutely back you up and provide you with all the resources needed to help your problems, to provide solutions for your problems. That is our model, and it's becoming more and more, uh, and you know, apparent that that's critically important. And we take that very seriously. And I, I don't know; it doesn't matter who you use today, but you have all the right to to ask these questions and expect that 
of your providers in, um, uh, at any given time. Great. Well, I think that's a great way to close out this session, Pavel. Thank you so much for joining us. And thanks for hopping on for the last 10 or so minutes for this great Q&A session. Always good to see you. Always good to talk to you. And for those Thank of you, you. That, that have additional questions, and especially those of you watching on demand, uh, feel free to reach out to Pavel. His contact information and LinkedIn information is on the right side of the right hand side of the page. Pavel, I know you, you shared some good uh, resources as far as the charts are concerned. So I think we've got some people that are looking for those. Um, okay. And go ahead. I do want to stress one last thing. I'm sorry. I think it's very important. Yep. <laughs> there were some changes recently. Um, uh, are we when you're talking about the contact information uh, for me? or to me if somebody was uh, wanting to reach out to me, which I'll be happy to assist with whatever I can. What um, contact information, as far as the email address is concerned, Brad, my email address, I just wanted to point this out really quick for this audience. Uh, my email address has changed actually recently. So I just wanted to point this out if you want to put that in the chat. Okay. Or if you uh, want to go ahead and call it out for everybody. Um, absolutely. So it is my, so it's no longer, so it is my first name, P A W. E L dot my last name S Z C Z Y G I E L at Escolab A E S C U L A P U S A dot com. All right, perfect. So hopefully okay. everybody wrote that wrote that down, but we do have that in your contact information. So okay. Um, Thanks again, Pavel, and to all of you out there, we've got a quick turnaround, which is good. We're not having to wait for the next session too long. We're about 10 minutes away. So uh, get up and grab a quick drink of coffee and get a stretch in. For those of you waiting for your CE, that's going to be available at the end of today's conference. You'll be automatically registered um, at, or click at the end, at the very, uh, at the very end of the conference, excuse me, there will be a access to CE certificate and survey. Uh, we'll see you very shortly, and you'll be automatically directed to the next session. Thanks again. Thank you very much. Good luck to all of you. Thank you for having me.